Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to be talking about how to apply to nursing school. I get a lot of emails and comments from people asking how to apply to nursing school and I also have a lot of friends that come to me and are like, how do I get into nursing school? I always wanted to be a nurse, but what do I have to do? So if you're looking for some guidance, this video is for you. I'm going to teach you all the things that you need to know to apply and to be able to streamline the process into an easy format. So as we know, applying to nursing school is not the easiest task. Every school has different requirements, and so it can be a little bit hectic. So where do we start the process? So to start, the first thing you wanna do is you want to find schools near you or near where you want to go to school that are accredited. Because in the United States, there are nursing programs that are not accredited. And when you graduate from them, you can't take the NCLEX and you can't become a nurse. And nursing courses are very difficult to transfer from school to school so it really wouldn't be good to go to a school that is not accredited because it's sort of a waste of time um, on top of that there are some things that you want to look for in the accreditation that are kind of like secret things that people don't know so for example when looking for an accredited school there are two websites that you want to look at so one is acenursing.us and this is uh, one of the agencies that accredit that provides accreditation to the schools and this agency provides accreditation for LPN diploma and uh, associate nursing degrees I believe also some bachelor's degrees uh, so when you go on their website uh, it will at, you know, even if you type in Google, if you type that in and then click like school search, or if you just go to their website and go to their search bar, uh, you can type in your state that you're looking at and it will pull up a list of schools that are accredited. So the other website to use is ccnecommunity.org. So this uh, agency accredits bachelor programs. So. You may see a school on the CCNE website that you don't see on the ACEN nursing website. And I'll put links to both of these below. And that's because they're two separate agencies. However, they both allow you to take the NCLEX. So one is not better than the other. Uh, so that's the first thing you want to look for is the status of the school. And you can check both of those sites. If you don't see it on one, make sure to definitely check the other site. And however, what you want to look for in that is if it says any like special kind of warning or special requirement or whatever. So sometimes when programs don't meet the requirements of these agencies or they do meet them, get accredited by the agency and then their NCLEX pass rate is really low for a couple of years, what will happen is these schools will go on a warning, which means that the agency is pretty much saying to them, like, get it together or we're gonna pull your accreditation. So be wary when you apply to schools that are on a warning because it would be horrible to be two of your four years through a program and they lose their accreditation. You know, you want to be aware of these things. You would be better off going to a two-year community college that's fully accredited with no warnings than to go to a top private four-year school that's gonna get their accreditation pulled in two years because now you're out $50,000 a year for two years and your classes aren't gonna transfer and now you can't take the NCLEX. So really, really important that you find a good nursing school. Another uh, thing that could be helpful to look for if you wanted to, but it's not like a super requirement, is to look at the NCLEX pass rates. What schools are passing at a really high percentage consistently? That's important because you want to know the students that are getting the education that are passing the NCLEX. You know, if you have a school that is a 92% pass rate, which is what my school was last year, that's, that's a really good pass rate. You know, you don't want to be at the school that is only a 75% pass rate. That's not good. So you want to also check that as well. Um, so once you have targeted schools in your area, I would say, so it's going to depend on your situation and what, where you're coming from. So 
every school has different requirements. So for example, a big issue for me is I had a past bachelor's degree and some of the schools in my area required me to take courses in the past five years, but I had graduated or taken those courses seven years ago. You know, basic bio, basic chem, when I was applying to nursing school, I had taken seven years ago. And some schools in my area required me to take it in five. And for me, that was a deal breaker. I didn't want to apply to those schools because retaking basic chem, like I've taken Orgo one and two, like I'm not gonna go take basic chem because you want it in a five year requirement. Like to me, that's just silly. I just think it's ridiculous. So for me, I crossed those schools off my list. So now I don't even have to do anything to deal with them. But if you are a student who maybe you haven't taken those classes, so you will meet the five year requirement, the more schools you apply to, the higher statistically that you will get into a school. Nursing programs are super challenging to get into. I know my school, we had 800 applicants for 50 spots. And it's not like a top nursing school in the country. Like it's not Harvard, you know, I Harvard doesn't even have a nursing program, but you know what I mean? This is just the way these nursing programs are. They're very difficult to get into. So you want to diversify yourself and apply to as many schools as possible. So let's say in your area, there are, I don't know, five schools that you want to apply to. So on, you can do it in Excel, you can do it on a regular piece of paper or you just print it out or whatever. You wanna write down what requirements that you need to meet per each school so that you make sure you have everything together. The other really important thing to look at is most schools, not all, but most, require you to take the T's. So the T's is, I have other videos on my channel explaining how to study for them, but the T's basically it's testing you on high school level, they say high school level, okay, high school level, reading, grammar, math, and science. But you really need to understand these concepts. I Like you can't just go in and wing it and do well. They say high school level, but you actually need to like understand them. Um, so you want to see what the cutoffs are. So some schools will be, you know, oh, in grammar and, you know, they'll say, they'll set out, a, um, they'll set out guidelines. So grammar, you have to have a 60 or above. Science, you have to have an 80 or above. And, you know, math, you have to have a 70 or above, whatever it is. And these vary vastly by schools. So a school that is 40 minutes south of me, you had to score like a 40 on the science. Like, a, like it didn't matter what you got on the grammar. You had to get like a, like it was so low. I was like, this is crazy. Like it's so low. But then other schools in my area, it's like, you need a 95 or, or I'm sorry, an 85 or above, you know, so they vary vastly. So if you have a little bit of time to, to allow yourself to take the T's, assess your score, you know, sometimes you can, you can take the T's twice in a year. So if you don't score as high as you want on a section, give yourself that month or two leeway that you can retake that section. I've had friends do that before. Um, so you want to look at that too, because if you're only applying to one or two schools and they both require really high T's scores, you could do all this work, but you want to have a backup plan. So for example, for me, when I took the T's, there is a school around me, it wasn't that one that was super low, but there's a school around me that did have a lower requirement than the school I wanted to get into. So I said to myself, if I don't score well, I'm just going to apply to this other school. Um, so just have like a backup plan in case, because if your dream school requires you to score an 85 or above on all sections, I can tell you right now that's really hard. For specifically for me, the grammar section, because I can't remember the exact number of questions, but I think every section had 50 questions, except the grammar section only had like 30 or 25. So, I mean, you have to get most of them right to get, you know, like an 85 in the grammar section. So that is, you also want to look for. You want to see what the different scores are for each school. The other thing is most of the schools are going to require an essay, but most of them are going to be similar, you know, why do you want to be a nurse? 
what was the most um, an experience that changed you in your life, you know, something like that. And you can use the same essay for the schools as long as it fulfills their requirement. Other things you're gonna need uh, before you start, you're definitely gonna have to be CPR certified. That's another thing, so you might just wanna get that out of the way before you know you get into all the craziness. So, so now you've found your schools, you've made sure they're accredited, you've written down all of the information that you need to apply to each school, what's required, you've looked at the T's test, and I would say that to see if those schools require it, and if they do require it, you're gonna have to set aside a good like four month block to really study for it. I would suggest looking at the other videos on my channel that talk about um, how to study for the T's test in the different sections. So now you've done that. And so at this point, I mean, you're pretty much done. You have a direction. So just go through your checklist and make sure that everything is done. The other big thing is when you're looking for the requirements, look at the class requirements. So we look to make sure if there's that five year limit, some schools might be 10, whatever, you want to check to make sure the limit. Some schools will let you um, test out of classes if you score high enough on your T's test. So that's something else to look for. You may not have to take basic chem and basic biology if you score high enough on your T's exams. Um, so that's another thing to look for, but really look at the specific school requirements because the classes that are required to enroll or um, to submit an application to a nursing school are really different. It's kind of, you know, I mean, you have your basic bio, your chem, nutrition, but some schools will require statistics, some won't. So you want to check all of those things. And like I said, some schools will let you sub out of bio and chem if you score high enough on your T's. So, I mean, that's a big thing too. Why are you gonna waste two, three, like two semesters doing bio one, bio two, chem one, chem two. I mean, that's a six month span that you could have comped out of just studying for a couple months and taking the T's test. So you want to look for that too. Um, so also the other thing I would put on your list is the deadline dates for applications. These vary through schools. So some may be November 2nd, some may be January 3rd. So you really want to identify that and that can kind of help you to, to figure out, you know, do I have time to take some courses that I need before the cutoff date? If, so, if a cutoff date is November 20th and it's August, say, you don't have time to take a couple courses before the deadline. But if the deadline date is January 20th, you have fall semester that you could essentially take one or two courses if you needed them. So those cutoff dates are really important as well. I would also say that when applying to nursing programs, I have another video about this, about should I enroll in a BSN, ADN, or direct entry MSN program if you have past bachelors. Um, however, I would identify the financial aspect of it. Um, going to a community college, I can't stress this enough, is going to be significantly cheaper than going into a bachelor's program. And I know that everyone is like, oh, but hospitals want the bachelor level nurses. And of course, I'm not saying get the ADN, be the nurse and get out of school, but I'm saying you can get the ADN, you can go be the nurse and make $30 an hour or whatever, and be taking classes online for a year or two and finish up your BSN. So, I mean, it's still taking that four years but you are making money during that time and you're gaining experience during that time. And especially if you have a prior bachelor's degree, I mean, these direct entry or accelerated, direct entry MSN or accelerated BSN programs, they look great on paper. I would love to have a BSN in 15 months, but you wanna pay a hundred grand for it? I mean, you really gotta look at this stuff. What is the tuition cost? Because you go in debt that kind of money for an undergraduate degree, what if you want to become an NP? You already have a hundred grand of loans. What are you going to do? I mean, so the unless your parents are filthy rich and can afford this, I mean, you can do that too, of course. But keep that in mind. I think a lot of people kind of shut out the community college idea because it is an ADN, because it is a community college. But realistically, a nurse is a nurse regardless of where you get it. And 
financially you need to do things that are gonna benefit your future and I'm telling you save that money for grad school don't waste it don't waste it so I think that that pretty much covers everything you have your checklist you have your due dates you've identified classes that you need you've identified the schools that fit the criteria um, for your T's test the classes that you've taken um, how far they are from your home that's another thing um, I will let you know now, nursing school is extremely stressful. You feel like even when you have time for yourself, you don't have time because you have a million things to do. So identify schools in your area, but as far as going, like having a very long commute, keep that in mind that that's going to add to the stress and exhaustion. And God forbid you got to run to school for something. If you're 45 minutes away, I mean, that's taking out hours of your day. So you know, I would just say that too. If you have a school that's 10 minutes down the street for your house, that would be my go-to school. Like that would be my number one choice just for the commute alone. So keep that in mind um, that the commute, it's a lot. And especially if you're a student that may have to work while you're in nursing school, you are not gonna want a long commute. You, you have no time as is, so. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe below. Feel free to email me or comment and give me any questions. And um, I look forward to making more videos for you soon. Thanks.